All right, and continuing some of the foolishness that comes from the charismatic movement. There's actually this charismatic, you know, Bethel Church pastor. Of course, it's from Bethel Church. What do you expect? Who is actually making this really perverted claim that he had an encounter with Jesus while laying in his bathtub. I mean, who, who comes up with this kind of stuff? Only a pervert would, for one thing. But this is the, this is the common fruit that comes from this charismatic movement. They claim all these weird... Um, I'm going to get to the scriptures in just a minute. Actually... I might as well cover it right now because the Bible is the final standard, not our experiences, not our feelings, not our what we think is, you know, spiritual experiences. It's God's word. And whenever someone experienced Jesus Christ or saw Jesus Christ, they always fell down dead before him. Let me show you that. Daniel chapter 10 verses 5 to 12. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose, go whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet were like in, in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words were the voice of a multitude were like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw with were with me, saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them. Uh, so that they fled to hide themselves. Compare this with Paul's experience in Acts chapter 9, nine verses 1 to 9. Paul was seeing Jesus Christ, but the men who were with him were not able to see him. They only heard a voice, but they were afraid too. Verse 8, uh, Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned uh, me returned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Good verse against the uh, sinless perfection heretics out there. He has corruption and he retained no strength. If he is sinlessly perfect, this shouldn't be happening. Just had to make a kick at the uh, the wicked sinless perfectionist Luciferians out there. This Luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism, who th who say that uh, oh you're not born in you're not born with the body of sin, all this other uh, non biblical unscriptural garbage is heresy. Uh, in verse eight of Daniel ten, Daniel said that you know turn him into corruption and he had no strength. Okay, that's the result of a sinful body, a corruptible body, a flesh. So sorry to all the sinless perfection Luciferians out there, you devils out there. Verse nine, yet heard I his voice of the word, voice. Yet heard I the voice of his words. When I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. I now, and when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst uh, set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy word were heard, and I am come for thy words. So notice how what Daniel does when he sees this uh, vision, which is Jesus Christ, he falls down dead. He can't retain his strength. Okay, this is the old. This Daniel chapter uh, ten verses five to twelve is an Old Testament appearing of Jesus Christ. He couldn't stand up. He just fell down dead, and he was afraid. Okay, let's uh, and again just compare that to Acts chapter nine verses one to nine and Revelation chapter one verses ten to seventeen. Go read those passages. Whenever they saw Jesus Christ, they fell down dead before him. They were afraid. But none of these charismatic devils who claim they've seen Jesus Christ ever fall down dead. You want to know why? Because Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse four, or sorry, eleven verse fourteen. All right, sorry, but that just has something in my eye. Uh, I think a fruit fly went in there. A bunch of fruit flies in my room. Gotta love that. But what I was saying is that basically Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse fourteen shows that Satan can appear as an angel of light. Okay, when these charismatic devils are claiming they're seeing Jesus Christ, they're seeing Satan, who is manifesting as an angel of light. And they're being deceived by him. They're not seeing Jesus Christ because they're not falling down dead before him. But let me show you this article uh, from Reformation Charlotte, ReformationCharlotte.org. Don't agree with them on everything. I probably wouldn't. You know, I, I probably have some issues with them. Uh, uh, they don't. They don't seem like the U.S. The King James. Again, just going on this article, not really saying, not not recommending this site. Just using the article they have. So it says uh, Bethel's Chris Valaton says he had an encounter with Jesus while laying in his bathtub. Pretty perverted when you get down to it. Uh, this is the, the vain imagination that comes from these charismatics. Uh, Bethel Church is full of crazy kooks. If it isn't uh, senior pastor Bill Johnson and his false prophecies and fake healings and promotions of false signs and wonders, I showed in my other video about Todd White how he just, he's basically denying, sorry, 
got something in my eye, uh, fruit fly, you know, feels weird. Uh, I got it out earlier, but you know what I mean? Uh, they, the eye still feels a little weird. The eyelashes got in there. I'm not going to get too much into that. But how I showed in my video about Todd White, how Satan can actually counterfeit uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses uh, I think it's 8 to 9. You know, shows that the Antichrist will do signs and wonders by the power of Satan. And there's examples too, where like for example in First Kings chapter 18, Elijah, you know, called down fire from heaven, and in Revelation 13, the Antichrist will call down fire from heaven by the power of Satan. So Satan can counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit. So don't be deceived when they try to say, Oh, you know, um, we're doing, you know, it's the it's the gifts, it's the Holy Spirit is giving us his power. No, Satan can counterfeit it. And Todd White lied to his people saying, oh, Satan can't counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he can. And he does. And he will do it in the future. And he does right now. His little devil minions are doing it right now in these charismatic false prophets. But it says, uh, promotions of false signs and wonders. Uh, then it's his associate, uh, Chris Valatum, doing the same thing. Chris Valatum, the second quote-unquote prophet in command at Bethel Church in Redding, California, told a story of how he encountered Jesus while laying in his bathtub. On his blog, he writes, I had an encounter with God years ago that had changed that has changed my life forever. As I laid in my bathtub one night, Jesus walked into my bathroom and told me, you're a great leader. You're going to be a prophet to kings, prime ministers, and governors. Um... I thought Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 and 19 said that we're not to add anything to the word of God and that the canon of scripture is complete. We don't need prophets anymore. We have the complete word of God. We have, let me just pull it down, uh, full screen. We have God's word. We don't need anything else. We don't need prophets. We have, we have a more sure word of prophecy right here, according to 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 through 21. He's a false prophet right there. We don't. He's uh, doing false prophecies. I'll put it that way. Uh, then he repeated this, his story on a video podcast he published, which can be seen in the clip we archive below. Then he has that down there. Sorry, this video is not going as planned. I was trying to see if I was full screen, if I did full screen or not, but I was apparently. So, anyway, that's the fun of using OBS to record videos. But anyway. So it says, the story is very similar and very creepily so to the story that another ordained Bethel Church pastor, Jenna Winston, told Winston, like, a Valentine had a strange experience with who she says was Jesus during her stay at a psych ward while being treated for mental illness. She says that Jesus walked into a room, climbed into bed with her, and started playing with her hair. Who comes up with this kind of perverted stuff? People are wicked devils who just come up with this really, really perverted stuff about how Jesus supposedly did this to them. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It was a devil's spirit. But they're claiming it's Jesus Christ. Because why? Let me turn to the word of God. Because that is our final standard as Christians. Maybe not theirs because they're charismatics. They rely on their experiences over the holy scriptures. But uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says the holy scriptures, not our experiences, are able to make us wise unto salvation. So, let me just show this scripture real quick. Alright, I decided just to get out of full screen mode. But, uh, where is it? Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 14. Sorry, I, I, I'm still getting used to the whole, the whole physical King James Bible thing. The whole physical copy of a King James Bible. I'm mostly using, mostly trying to, I mostly use my computer. So, just getting used to having a physical copy. Uh, okay, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse number, I'll start at verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great, things if his mini no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 2. Good, another good verse to use against these charismatics. Revelation 2, verse 2. Because we are told to test their spirits. They can't say, oh, you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. No, Scripture tells us we're supposed to try them and test their spirits. It's not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And by the way, you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost if Jesus Christ is not physically on the earth. Because guess what? You're not Jesus Christ. Okay? In Matthew 12, when Jesus talks about blaspheming the Holy Ghost, that was towards him. He was doing the gifts of the Spirit. If you're, you're not, you, basically, if you're a charismatic, you're not Jesus Christ. Okay? Speaking against your false gifts is not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You can only do it when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. 
and you're speaking to him saying like when the Pharisees were accusing him of, of doing it by the power of Satan he's like oh you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost yeah read, read it in context he's saying neither in this world nor the world to come when it talks about their sins being forgiven you can't do you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost unless Jesus Christ is physically on the earth so I want to point that out too because they're going to say oh you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost twisting scripture to have this cult like control over people but Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how can, thou canst not hear, bear them, which are evil, and thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, that was the verse I just read. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth not, or that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Uh, false prophets, false apostles. Let me show you an example of one. Like I just showed in my video, this guy right here. He, he's, a, he's a false prophet, false apostle. That's what he is. And he's trying to deceive people. Don't be deceived by this charismatic, kooky blasphemy and perverted blasphemy too about, oh, he came to me in the bathtub or whatever. Just absolutely perverted and disgusting. Don't be deceived by this whole wicked movement. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.